Okay, um, as you can tell, my um, studio is nowhere near set up yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm gonna solve that next year. Maybe sooner, probably not. Uh, I don't I don't plan to really make any more videos before next year. But um, I just wanna record this, even if it's only for my own reference for later. I'm listening to, um, I know this is actually the best laugh I've had for the whole day. Special podcast with um, Jim Sterling and Digital Homicide Hatching It Out. And you can tell that there's just a failure to communicate here. And so I did a little graphic to show um, how, uh, how a system works. This is, I, I just have a little note saying this is a system which cannot be represented any simpler without losing critical comprehension. So a system, you know, I understand how the saying make things as simple as possible but no simpler. If you make things more simple than they are, then you create superstition. Um, or oversimplification. It's really the same thing in my dictionary, but obviously um, I need to explain that so that we're on the same page or so that we're using the same dictionary. Um, you know, if you oversimplify something, you lose something very important. You know, for example, if you start off saying, well, hey, um, I was robbed last night by this guy wearing a green uniform, then that that's a story. That's a simple story. But if you say, well, everyone who wears a green uniform is a robber or everyone who, who wears a uniform is evil that's you know taking from that story and saying something totally different because the original story didn't say that there was not enough evidence in that first story to say that every that there is some sort of casual factor between the uniform or the, the apparel and the attack um, but prejudice is something that is oversimplified. oversimplified. It's when you start to see one thing and you link it to another um, without there actually being that link. So it's something that happens to humans very easily because of um, it's sort of like an exploit, you know. Um, if there is a danger, then you tend to be want to avoid that danger so this is what we call lost bias it's a survival instinct or a survival mechanism in the human cognitive sphere but uh you can overcome that because you can recognize okay well i thought that was a tiger but it really wasn't and you can take control of yourself that's what maturity is about and that's what being human is about as opposed to being i don't know an animal in the wild or or something like that that can be easily manipulated by the environment so as a human being you take more responsibility for your understanding or for your comprehension i prefer to use the word comprehension because you know it, it reminds me of components it's a similar word to components yeah and you can take us take apart things and put them together but if you if you model things as a system it's more than the sum of its parts because the parts are interacting and parts are all necessary to the whole so the whole system, in this case, I'm talking about the whole, um, I would call it, um, well, this can apply to both the video game production system and can also provide to the um, persona-based um, video production system because Jim Sterling is basically a persona and he produces videos. Um, Slaughter of Grounds is a game developer studio and they produce interactive software which you may want to call video games if you are be so inclined. I, I am not going to get into quality or anything like that or what makes a game because that's irrelevant. See I'm making things simple but what is relevant is that they both produce things. So in my diagram in the middle there's a producer but the producer is not actually the human being that does the production. This is the key fact that the slaughtering grounds guy doesn't understand. The producer is not actually a human being. The producer is a concept and human factors are involved in the production but they're separate from it. And so the producer is like a, a wall between the marketplace and the human factors who drive production. So at high levels of corporations this is quite literal where you can have something like a shell corporation which doesn't actually produce anything and it just exists as a legal entity in order to transfer funds or avoid taxes or something like that. Now in that case a shell corporation would not actually be a producer, a shell corporation will actually be um, an anti-producer. But it will still take the same position in this diagram. So 
that's what I'm getting at. This this here is a system diagram. And when you understand a system, you realize that you cannot actually take critical components out of it. You can change the nature of a component. You can say, for example, that the producer is not adding value. You can say that a shell corporation is not adding value to society, that it's draining, it's avoiding taxes, so therefore it's actually um, taking away value. Of course, the people who own shell corporations will say that taxes are what drain value. So they will say that governments drain value and therefore their shell corporation acts as a producer to produce more value for them by avoiding um, paying taxes. And you can also have transnational corporations which are not shell corporations. Um, and you can also have firms which are not even registered because you, when you work as a firm, you are acting in a different capacity from when you're being a human being interacting with human people. For example, take a wrestler. When a wrestler goes into a ring to wrestle or any other fighter, or boxer or whatever, they're not acting as a normal human being. They're acting as a particular persona within a particular domain. They're in a special arena. So I, I use a, the imagery of a wrestler or a boxer because that arena is actually their firm. You know, the wrestler is producing entertainment the martial artist is trying to produce a, a victory for himself. The boxer is producing entertainment and also producing the victory and so forth. So in the same way when you enter into, even if it's your own home, enter into your factory and you produce a product, you put that product into the marketplace, whether you put it through Steam or, or put it on YouTube or whatever, then that product on the marketplace is separate and distinct from you as a human being. Now what has happened in the case of um, of, of actually at this stage both both Jim Sterling and Digital Homicide is that they're they're both offended because their actual human being has been attacked um, through attacking their their sense of self their their ego their socially bound ego as opposed to um, their products so in this diagram I'm sure I'll be able to because of the technology I'm using, I have to link it later, but you're probably looking at it now. On the left hand side, you can see the human factors, and way over on the right hand side, you have the marketplace. So I've labeled the, the products here as these colored green boxes, or I guess that was more like, a, like olive green boxes in the marketplace, and on the left hand side, the human factors is a nice blue circle. Because to show that they're like the west and the east, they're as far away from each other as they possibly can be. So the um, the problem with uh, not only academic, the problem with mature discourse, which you don't need to go to formal university to know, this used to be common sense and it should be common sense now, but apparently only people who go to universities tend to have common sense nowadays, but um, the, the problem with discourse is that you have to avoid ad hominem attacks which is latin for against the man or something like that i don't actually know latin just a few phrases so don't think i'm showing off on you i'd like to know latin but why bother i mean it's not that anybody speaks it anyway but you're you're trying to avoid attacking the left hand side of attacking the man you can attack the products as much as you want because the products are in the marketplace and they're separate and distinct from the man they're even separate from the firm however you can see that the marketplace and the firm are next to each other the marketplace directly influences the firm because the reputation of the firm and so on are dependent on the quality of the products or rather on the um, revenue which the products generate which is not directly um, is not necessarily directly driven by the quality of the products because quality has components you can break that down again but that's another thing altogether I'm not here to teach you um, business theory or anything like that in this video although hopefully next year I'll be doing that but I'm here to basically just say that what happens at the point that I've stopped I've stopped about maybe it's halfway it's um, where am I? Uh, you know you're so saying that you I'm 52 minutes into it and it's supposed to be an hour and 41 minutes so um, I'm, I'm 52 minutes in so I'm more than halfway and so far what is, what is going on over and over is that Jim Sterling understands this understands this concept but the um the other guy on digital homicide 
he doesn't understand it. So the digital homicide guy has his ego very firmly invested directly in his products. And so when his products are attacked, he views it directly as an ad hominem attack. He doesn't see a separation between his products and himself. And part of this is because he spent a lot of time and effort. And, and by effort, I mean in the physical definition of effort, meaning consuming energy, in order to create these products. Now, what Jim Sterling is saying that when Jim Sterling says that he doesn't spend effort, he doesn't mean that he doesn't spend energy. What he means is that he doesn't exhibit professional levels of skill. So, at least that's why I take it to me. Um, so he's criticizing not the level of effort of the, the human factors. He's, he's criticizing the level of skill of the firm in producing a product. Because if you need your customers to tell you when certain basic things are missing from your product, then you don't have good quality control. If you need to have people tell you, well, you know this product really isn't worth the price that you're offering and I like a refund then you produce what is known as a substandard product so you either need to improve your quality control not necessarily your the amount of effort you put in but where you put that effort and what you spend that time on doing and others you may need to control things which you may be blind to due to um, subjective biases and other things that um, human factors often overlook. By human factors, I mean human beings working as a group. Because group thinks that same, even if you're alone, you're still one human being working in a group and you create a, a temporal. Uh, uh, the group here is not only a group in, in a geosocial sense, it's a temporal and spatial thing. It's more related to activity, There's more related to the ideology. So the quality assurance um, department usually has to be either somebody else or somebody working from a different perspective. One person can do all of this, but it's highly unlikely that one person will be able to do all of it because of requiring to change perspectives. And even if um, it's like proofreading your own essays, you write your essays and you think everything is fine, you hand it to somebody else and the first thing you, the C is that you wrote T-H-E-I-R when you meant T-H-E-R-E. -E. Or some word that you thought was spelled perfectly. It might be spelled perfectly, but it might be the wrong word. Um, a proofreader can look over things and assure quality. This is just using an analogy. But this analogy also fits into the systematic model. In this case, the human factor would be the author. The firm would be... Um, the actual author acting as a firm and the marketplace but the firm will also sorry the firm will also include a proofreader All right so the author and the proofreader would be part of the um the producer system because i drew it as a square box because it's a system in itself or not maybe you could call it a universe if you want to be mathematical but i don't want to be too mathematical about it let's just say that i use boxes for systems and circles for people or groups so similarly in the marketplace is a system and the boxes in marketplace each of them are a system a video is a system because in addition to the actual video um, people are also buying into the experience what people actually buy into is not a product but a particular experience whether that experience is utility for example um, when you buy a tool you don't really buy the tool you buy the the usefulness that our tool provides in the future and that's where you can rent a tool rather than buying it because you're saying, hey, I only want the utility for a certain time and then I'll be done. And um, yeah, I know I'm all over the place, but um, you know, this is an impromptu and script unscripted video, which is really going to be more like an audio with a still picture if everything works properly. And I think it will because I think at least the system is stable, even though it's not completed yet. Still need many things. Um, and yeah and I know that so because I know that that's why I'm not producing videos but um some people I guess are pushed due to for personal and financial reasons to produce things which are sub quality and hope for the best but if you're going to do that then 
You shouldn't be annoyed when people say that your products are sub quality. I'm not going to be annoyed when people say that this video is not professional or, or what not. Because, you know, I know that it is. So, I, I know how to take those things in stride. And even when I've had mostly positive feedback on my videos, partly because I've only released videos when I've thought they were ready. And some of them I put out which were just crap. Um, I just put up, put up there and I still had mostly positive feedback. Because I had a positive momentum from treating people as people. And I think I've only had two or three negative comments in the whole time I've been on YouTube. Of course, that's because I'm not really on YouTube anymore. I'm not active there. And I probably wouldn't go back. I probably would go to another site. So even if this is on YouTube, you know, whatever. I'll probably, um, I'm looking at Vimeo right now. And maybe some other sites. So I'm looking at a whole different model of doing things. Especially considering um, that I want to try some professional videos. But most of them just be for fun like they were before anyway but even to do something for fun i think it's important to do things at a certain quality and with a certain awareness that you're going to get a certain amount of blowback and you have to sort of um be careful not to become offended because when you become offended when people are are criticizing your work as opposed to attacking or criticizing your or attacking your work as opposed to attacking you personally then you carry things way over to the left when they don't need to be way over to the left. I think it's important to keep the human factors separate from the production. Even if the separation is only in mind, for example, the, the example that I used earlier, with the author who, he's a human being writing, but he's also acting as a firm, as an author. Yeah? Whether he's using a pseudonym or not, it's not a matter of registration, it's a matter of his mindset and how he therefore interacts with the world. So it doesn't matter if, if he's in the same human body. He could also act as a proofreader. Like I've, I've proofread, proofread some of my own stuff and edited some of my own stuff. But the way I did it was that I waited in some cases years before I edited it. So it's, you know, it's like if I'm reading somebody else's stuff, it's not still in my mind. I don't have that emotional attachment to it. And even then I still use external proofreaders and editors and so on. So um, I'm saying all of this to say that in my mind, you know, acting as a producer is different from acting as a human being. And you need to understand that concept if you're going to do business. Just because you're offering a product for sale doesn't really mean you're a business person. Doesn't mean that you have a comprehensive understanding of business. Doesn't mean that you have any wisdom when it comes to business. I mean, everybody has some degree of wisdom, some degree of skill, some degree of talent. But there is a certain level of competence, and many people are below that level of competence, but they believe that they're above it. And otherwise, many people are way above it, but they want to keep moving forward so much that they don't even realize, you know, how adept they already are, how skilled they already are. They may have some of that imposter syndrome thing that people talk about. I mean, I've often struggled with imposter syndrome, but I didn't know it was called that. Um, you know, so it's a good thing that Gautier sort of um, cued me into that indirectly through his um, smoke and mirrors thing, which I actually like a lot better than um, his more popular music. Yeah. Now, that's that for now. But um, I just I'm gonna listen to the rest of this and see if see if they mention any of the points that I mentioned. But I just felt I really needed to make this video and make these notes. And it actually, the whole the whole process really inspired me to show that there's so many people that can benefit from a better understanding of business. Um, I think probably that whole disagreement either might not have come about or could have been more easily resolved. You know, if um, my videos had existed in the marketplace at an affordable price and they were aware of them and they could, you know, use it as a reference. So um, I'm just using videos, but this could actually be a, a simple booklet. I mean, it could be a one-page cheat sheet. So all those are different sets of products that could be in my selling portfolio and therefore in the marketplace as well. But um, marketplaces are not necessarily simple, you know. Um, so we can call this little thing a loss leader in terms of financially, but in terms of um, emotionally and socially, which is one of the main reasons to get into business in the first place 
start to become more aware of business because we're all in business if you um whether you realize it or not because of the um the commercialization of the human soul unfortunately i can't see th there's really no benefits to the commercialization of the human soul but um that's another that's another rant or another story altogether i'm gonna actually modify this graphic to be different from how it was before i'm gonna make it slightly better or slightly worse so i'm gonna um, yeah i'm here rambling to myself so i'm gonna like stop rambling to myself because i'm just make, making more work for myself later i'll have to edit the video and cut out this part and i'll just um variant two and i'll just call that a night so um yeah thank you thank you jim and thank Never you, that you that yeah. for making me laugh very entertaining later